So in this tutorial, we are going to build a 3D change detection smart engine that will take in any point cloud. So let me showcase what we have. We will have two point clouds uh, like this one. This is from a terrestrial laser scanner and we'll have two epochs. So these are the two epochs. You can see they are slightly misaligned, but that's okay. We'll fix that in the solution that I will give you right away. And after that, we'll investigate two ways of knowing where we have a change. The first one will be point based, which means for each point, we look at where we have a change. So this is already super advanced and super useful. The second way will be, okay, let's look at an object based change detection. And this is the result that you will have. You will identify specific areas like this tree is now there or these leaves are now happening. And also here, uh, it looks like we have an element that disappeared. This is what we are going to do right now, only with the power of Python and in exactly 10 steps. And the 11 is really to build the pipeline. So this is the first stage. In another session, I will then showcase how to build a SaaS application based on that, where you upload any point cloud and you retrieve the change directly. So without further ado, let's dive right into it. The first thing that you need to note is that we have a minimal amount of dependency. That's how I like to work. Open3D is really leveraged only to visualize with Python. And after that, it's NumPy, SciPy, and LastPy to load uh, last file directly from our scanners information. And that is it. So all that you need to do if you are new to the Python world is you create a uh, Anaconda environment. So here I have my environment setup. I activate it and I have my ID. Here I use Spider. Let me zoom in. Yes, uh, to work around more easily with everything. So the first thing that I will do is I will set that as my console directory. I will close um, maybe uh, to make sure that we work from scratch and I import all my libraries. Then we move on to step one, loading the point cloud. So as you can see here, I just check if we have a last um, file. And I will load it and I will create a variable with Open3D geometry, so an Open3D uh, object. And then I will fit the points to my object and visualize it. So let me showcase what we have here. If I open it now, you can see that we have our point cloud that is loaded. What I can do is show you my directory. So here we have the two point cloud, the LT0 and LT1. So I will just open it with Cloud Compare. This is an external open source software that is fantastic to visualize. A point cloud, small scale point cloud, if you need to visualize large scale point cloud. I have another tutorial from it, but enough of that. So within Cloud Compare, this is the point cloud that we are going to process. We don't need the color at this stage. We don't use that as a feature. So I'm going not to load the RGB data, but we could use it as well. So this is our input point cloud, and this is what we have loaded uh, here, LT0. The first stage that we do is actually pre-process. So the ID that I share here is from the book uh, 3D Data Science with Python. It's brand new. I encourage you to put your hands on it. Um, it's more than 600 pages, everything about 3D data science with Python that I wrote. It took me more than five years and all my expertise is poured into that. So essentially, what is happening here is that I don't want all the time to do change detection on the full scale point cloud. So what I do is I don't sample and I remove the outliers. And so this is the original point cloud. And this is the one that is done sampled with a voxel down sampling to have a regular grid because it's easier than to handle uh, checking if we have a change or not. And how do we understand if there is a change or not? As I mentioned, we'll have two strategies, one which is point based and the other one object based. So this is an extract of an article that I wrote with one of my PhD students, Abdel Razak, that is going to finish soon, hopefully. And in here, uh, this is the source point cloud and this is the target point cloud. And what we do is for the source point cloud, we'll try to get point in a certain radius, compute the distance to this point, and this will allow us then to understand if we have a change or not in a cylinder that is extracted from that. Okay, and for the object base, it's a bit different and I will explain that to you a bit later. Okay, so back to my point cloud, you see that we have our down sample point cloud and our layer will filtered. This will make it much easier to work around with. With this kind of framework where you have the full scale, you don't sample to something that is usable, but keep all the information that is needed for the later experiments. And then we'll do the change detection and at the end upsample everything. So this is a fantastic trick uh, that I also showcase in Segmenta OS. Now that step two is done, let's move on to step three, which is loading our second point cloud temporarily. I just paint them with different colors so, so that we see. 
um, the T0 is in RG, so this is the green, and the T1 is in red, 1RGB, okay? So you can see that we have our two-point cloud that are not overlapping, we have a shift between them, and we have elements like this tree looks like it's in one state but not the other one, and here also there was some construction that made the roof maybe disappear in between the two times um, of scanning this element. All right, step three is done. We can move on to an optional stage. And here, this is just to show you that, okay, we may need to fix some uh, registration error if in between the states in which you acquired your data, you had a slight uh, georeferencing error, for example. And for that, I assume global registration is done. I will only work with local registration uh, with a point to play in ICP. So these are some criteria. I will not extend myself. Again, if you have any question, leave them below. I will be happy to, to answer them or join the community or take on the book. You will have all the answers there. But uh, this is what I do. I will do the ICP, so iteratively trying to find a model that's and a transformation matrix that brings them closer together to minimize uh, an error distance matrix. So it's kind of a loss function uh, in a way. All right, and you can see that it's much tighter now, right? Uh, which means that now that we want to do change detection, it will be true change detection where we will not actually find out, uh, find out some kind of distance error between uh, or georeferencing error that is tagged as a change. Here we really want to know only what is changed and not what is linked to the data acquisition and the data uh, domain knowledge. Right, so that is done. We have the two-point cloud where any like uh, error associated to that will be overlooked and all that will be remaining will be mostly assigned to a change. The first thing that I do is computing my cloud-to-cloud -cloud distances. So what I do is use a KD tree on the target points and I will query this tree from the source point, okay, that I pass in so that the source point is the query, uh, let's say, prompt, and we will take all the points uh, around that from the target uh, point cloud. And down the line, we want to get the distances, and I just retrieve that, right? So if I print out the distances, you see that's what we have, source, align, and target PC. And then from that, let's compute some kind of statistical analysis of change. Uh, with this function, analyze change that takes in the distance and a threshold to which will not uh, take anything else. So if I do apply my function, essentially, you see that we have 46,000 uh, points, like 47,000, with significant change. All the other ones are below this threshold of 10 centimeter. And the mean change is around 2 meta and the max change 8 meta. And we see that I also compute some kind of uh, volume change. This is what I have here, total volume change, right? And this is 24%. So this is just a rough idea and this is only based on the points themselves. So let's move now onto the visual aspect. So this is the quantitative analysis. Let's move on the qualitative analysis in step six where I create a little function to have a distance heat map essentially and, and pass that in the open 3D um, as a color element. This is what I do so that we visualize exactly what we have here on the point cloud. And as you can see, it looks like we have some change here, we have some change here, we have some change here. If you want, you could tune this heat map to be more localized, right? Uh, but this is a bit more trickier. Already at this stage, it looks like it's super promising and you already identify the changes. The only thing is you don't have a clear discontinuity and the gradient is failing every time. So it's hard to delineate exactly if an object appears or not, if it's just a single point. So this is why I'm going to show the, the smart engine um, real innovation here that you can leverage and extend where we will reason at the object level essentially. So this is step seven, super, super key. What I do is define a function detect mixing region. I take the source, the target point cloud, my distances, again, the threshold, and what is the minimal region size as point number, and this will be 10. So this is also somewhere where I need to highlight that it's absolutely key to think exactly in a logic where you have something that is more or less fixed from the get-go. What I mean here is 
if you remember, we did this pre-process that don't sample a point cloud with a voxel uh, based on sampling strategy. And this allows us to always work more or less with the same density or maybe the same point counts if we want, which allows us to know that an object will always uh, the same object will always have more or less the same number of points, right? If you don't do that, uh, of course, we need to adjust that. But th this is just a way to simplify your workflow if you already inject some kind of um, data and expert uh, knowledge around 3D data processing. Great. So what's happening here? I find the point that are far from any point in the target. Okay. So from there, I will create my KD tree again, and I will initialize a region growing process this is on sh all shown in the segment OS course where you have something very deep down. But essentially, I will take my query point, my new region, I'm going to grow my region from that and check against um, the other target point cloud to see if we have a change. So this is what I do. And essentially, at the end, we will retrieve a certain amount of regions. And in this case, we have 71 missing region, okay, from the source line and the target PCD using the distance that we had. So this is super key. We don't necessarily uh, use the, the normals as we would in a classical region growing scenario. This is to show that you can use any features. It's always super nice to, to, to work in this way. So now let's visualize what we have here. And this is my eighth step. And if I execute that, essentially I will apply a random color to each of my regions. And you see, this is beautiful because now you have an object, so a region that was detected as a change here. And you can see here that the tree is almost as a whole object as well. And this is another tree. And here we, we lost a branch. So already the level and the granularity of your analysis is much better. And this is key insight to know that working at the object level is usually much better than at the point level. You don't have as much granularity, but you, you can get a much, uh, much closer link to the decision-making scenario where it will be, oh, uh, the storm took away this branch. Oh, the tree disappeared for some reason. Is the thief that took the tree away? No. Uh, jokes aside, this is one example, but of course, in the next session, I will, I will showcase various examples around that. It's not finished because, as you remember, we only worked on the subsample point cloud. So this is fine for experiments, but in production line, you want to make sure that uh, whichever original point cloud is not lost and that any process that you did, you can back project that on your original point cloud. And this is what I do in the ninth step. Essentially, I will transfer my color to the original and it's all by leveraging the power of my indexing technique with KD trees and pushing that all to my original point cloud. So now um, you can trust that. And of course, all the code, the data and everything else is part of um, the link just down below, the access is limited depending on if you are a member of the course or not, but it's there. All right, so this is the full scale point cloud and you can see that we transferred and we're propagating the labeling on the full point cloud. And this is beautiful because even if I go in the branch, you see the level of analytics that you can have. There's, I think you will rarely see, even today, uh, there are not a lot of works that showcase what you can do with Python for change detection. So I'm super happy to bring that to you. Right, now uh, to export the result, because this is nice, this is beautiful, this is within Python, but at the end of the pipeline, I think it's good if you can export everything um, to yeah, a folder. So this is my output directory, uh, which uh, we can save. So here it's just to test our little function. So if I do save results, you see that in the output, we have the heat map, the missing and the color point cloud. So let me check change detection output what's creating right now. I will take all of that and bring that into Cloud Compare to make sure that it works. Uh, we don't have any additional Scala fields, so that's okay. And here, RGB, that's okay. I put everything in RGB. So that's the initial. Um, that is the distance. Let's check the distance heat map, right? That's the colored source and the missing region only. Right, so that's it. And from there, of course, you have the distinction within Python of all the various objects. I just want to show you, you don't even need to do random colors, that each object that you can then extract statistic around them. So here, there's other various object that you have. Let me bring in an, another element. And you see all the little branches that we found were missing from one to the other. Of course, as I mentioned, the, there is still a little detail to know, and this is where 
your 3D data expertise as a 3D data scientist will shine is that some of it needs to be filtered out because this is linked to the data acquisition methodology, which is not perfect. We don't deal with perfect data and as it will be too easy. This is imperfect data from real world. And of course, we need to handle that as well. Okay, so um, the full pipeline is then very simple. Uh, I don't know why I cannot open it. Did I delete it? This is more than possible. Uh, no, the full pipeline is here. This is just me writing thing uh, at the wrong position. Yes, uh, the technician region. And then at the end, those are the next stages. All right. So in here, essentially, I will just plug in all the various stages, loading the point cloud, pre-processing the point cloud, registering them. This is optional. Computing the distances, detecting the missing region, creating the statistic, and visualizing both colored and heat map. And then after saving, I commented it because I don't want to erase it. But essentially, all that I need to take care of is make sure that any parameter that is essential, so the uh, voxeling uh, parameter to sampling, the distance threshold and the region size threshold are put there. And you can adjust and you will see that it will run all the various stages and then showcase pretty efficiently actually the result. So here, this is the result. You have a little less regions because I adjusted the region size and the distance threshold. Uh, and this is the heat map. So you see the next stage um, to go onto an app, which I can, I think, showcase from here directly. Hopefully it runs. I didn't try it for uh, some time because I was on other projects, but essentially it looks like it's running. Uh, let me try to put that um, in here. So this is using radio. And normally if I take my data, um, was T1, all right, and T0, sorry, and T1, I have all my various sliders. Uh, and then you can process point cloud. And normally we get both a preview of the image of the distance computation, the statistics, and we can download down the line the results. So what I did is package all of uh, this specific pipeline and just use Gradio. But I will use that for another session. And also in this session, I will uh, process a lot of various point cloud because this will be super useful for various use case. In any case, this is a super advanced solution because we inject this uh, smart thinking and this object-based detection, which is very rare in academia and industry, but it allows you to attack a lot of issues and challenges. So the only thing left is for me to, to, to yeah, to, to, to check out the innovation that you're going to build around that. This is a fantastic new tool that you can tune, of course, to your specific application before closing in. Let's check out uh, the result change detection tool. You see with the statistic, the preview, and we can download the point cloud. So this is the next stage. How do we go from prototyping, which I did here, to having uh, an app in-house and having after that a full uh, SaaS service that you can provide or a local software because I'm usually fond of working locally with as minimal compute power as possible. That's it for me. Uh, see you in the next tutorial. Bye-bye.